This is, what is this? Oh, this is a shot from 130,000 miles out. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess it's it, from approaching, or, the, it's from approaching the moon, looking back at the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, I've seen this on a couple of flights. Is, do, was this something that you got, although this is from Apollo 11, did you shoot a shot of the earth like this? Mm -hmm. So you had a, a TV camera in the spacecraft. That's correct. I checked the DVD set released by Spacecraft Films. In total, the Apollo 14 crew filmed only four telecasts. Two on their way to the moon, and two on their way back. They also shot some 16mm footage. Yet, despite Mitchell's claims, not a single one of them showed a far off planet Earth. And the booklet that came with the DVD set makes no mention of any such video even though the back cover claims the set contains all the transmissions filmed on Apollo 14. Given this apparent discrepancy, either Mark Gray or Edgar Mitchell is being untruthful in their stories. If the Apollo 14 crew did indeed shoot telecasts of the Earth, why were they not included on the Spacecraft Films DVD? What are they hiding? On the other hand, if Spacecraft Films are the ones telling the truth, and no such footage existed in the first place, why did Edgar Mitchell tell us otherwise? What is worth noting about the included transmissions is that in the second one, whilst the astronauts float around in zero gravity, we do see the moon outside the window behind them. A natural question is obviously raised by this. Why not to the Earth? Okay, uh, Houston, I got a question. Does that picture fill up your whole screen now? I want to correlate it with our monitor. Uh, negative. It, uh, it, we got about, uh, oh, quite a ways to go before we, uh, fill up our screen. Uh. Oh, but these blatant cuts and edits are not only present in the CSM television footage. Oh, no. But also in the lunar surface footage. Three years after his epic journey to the moon on Apollo 10, Jean Cernan would get another trip to the moon. But this time, as commander of Apollo 17, he would get to touch the moon this time. Also this time, Apollo 10 Capcom Jack Schmidt would follow him onto the surface. During their first EVA, they planted the sixth and final flag on the moon. Cut! Jesus fucking Christ, Neil! How many times do we have to try this? One small step for a man. Not man, a man, and that's you. Everybody take five. Neil, practice your fucking line. Oh yeah, let's use real pilots. I want to use real pilots. Propagandists usually love to argue. Why didn't the director just go for a second take when he saw the flag waving? Unfortunately for the propagandists, we can now prove visually that the director did indeed do just that. The flag ceremony, of course, was televised by the Lunar Rover's onboard remote-controlled camera, called the Ground Controlled Television Assembly. But alas, when it aired, few people saw it, as the billions of taxpayers had now completely lost interest in the moon landings. Fortunately, though, this ceremony is now part of a DVD set released by Spacecraft Films, so we can now see what they missed. On the back cover, Mark Gray makes his selling point. He claims his DVD set contains complete in-flight television transmissions, including the three lunar EVAs. With this in mind, 
Let's watch the flag ceremony that took place during the first EVA. Watch now as Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt assemble the flag on the moon's surface. Uh, I've never put a flag up in the moon before. What? Pull that in. <laughs> you have to get it down to my level. Tall guys are all alike. <laughs> Wait, I'm not through. Okay. How about getting it stretched out here? I will. I just can't start forward as fast as I'd like to. Hate to touch it, my hands are so dirty. Okay? Well, it's gonna wanna curl. Maybe it'll, uh, that's what it looks like it's waving in a breeze. Yes, sir. How about right there? A couple this way, and we'll take a couple that way. How's that? Oh, I ought to get. Let me get over the other side. We got the rover in the background. Yeah. In the limb. It does wave when you do that. We got a beautiful picture of you guys up down there. Let me tell you, Bob, this flag is a beautiful picture. You see that? Okay, you're, uh, it's partially covering the rover, but I think it's a pretty good shot. How's that? Let me get the focus right. In case you missed it. Okay, you're, uh, it's partially covering the rover, but I think it's a pretty good shot. How's that? Let me get the focus right. One more time. Okay, you're, uh, it's partially covering the rover, but I think it's a pretty good shot. How's that? Let me get the focus right. Obviously, not only does the camera suddenly cut, a transition fades the two clips together. This ultimately proves that the footage has been edited. As was the case with the Apollo 10 footage, someone has been caught cheating here. Just before this sudden transition, Lunar Module pilot Jack Schmidt says the words, It's partially covering the rover, but I think it's a pretty good shot. After the first clip fades out, he then says, How's that? You see that? Okay, you're, uh, it's partially covering the rover, but I think it's a pretty good shot. How's that? Let me get the focus right. A quick look at the Apollo 17 transcript logs these two quotes as one statement, not two, suggesting that this clearly edited sequence happened in real time. Also worth noting is that unlike the Apollo 10 transcript, no mission time marks are given for the quotes made during Lunar EVA. All the NASA footage I've shown you came straight from the Spacecraft Films DVD sets. It seems not only did the director go for a second take, he used both of them in the finished project. The American flag has become a symbolic highlight of the Apollo moon hoax. William Bryan may have discovered the waving flag, but I discovered the fading flag. Partially covering her over, but I get pretty good shot. How's that? Let me get the focus right.